the Temple Owls. Now, Stan Drayton is the new head coach of Temple. He was the running backs coach at Texas last year. Uh, went 3-9 and nine last season under Rod Carey, and they just did not hit on the right hire at all when they brought him over from Northern Illinois. Uh, their postgame win expectancy, like they won three games last year, but their postgame win expectancy said 2.09 and 9.91. So really, it was a 2-10 and 10 team. Uh, they got that win over Memphis, but uh, that was yep. that was a little weird anyway. Uh, they did go 2-10 and 10 against the spread last year, so they didn't even outperform those expectations. Their projected SP Plus record is 4-8. and eight. Now, they're number 71 in returning production. Their roster strength, which has normally been a big thing for them, especially based in Philadelphia, uh, their roster strength is number 118 in the country right now. Like They have lost a lot of talent off that roster, and Rod Carey could not find those diamonds in the rough. He could not figure hang out. On, hang, on, hang on, I don't understand. the ro- Is roster strength returning talent or just roster strength as the guys that are there where they rank in talent? The guys that are there right now, and it's a combination. It's co- college football winning edge basically combines experience and recruiting ratings, right? So you take your recruiting rankings – and then you add experience along with that. So if you've got a youth movement with a bunch of uh, two and three stars, your roster strength is not going to be very good. That's basically what their roster strength is right now. Number 118 uh, overall. It's number 119 on offense, number 111 on defense. So it's, it's not – it don't look good. I'll say that. Now, let's talk about the offense here. They do have a new OC. Obviously, this is a new coaching staff. Danny Langsford, he was the quarterback's coach at Colorado the last two years. Um they did bring in a transfer quarterback, and that is Quincy Patterson II. Uh, Dewan Mathis, you remember the kid from Georgia that started, uh, I think, one game in 2020 for Georgia? Um, he was their starter last year and was not very good. Quincy Patterson II comes in from North Dakota State, but he didn't play last year. So I don't know what that necessarily means. Uh, the wide receiver core is not great. Uh, even with several seniors, none of them have really played uh, the offensive line is uh, weak at best. I mean, it's just not this is not great. Uh, anything that they do this year should be an improvement over last year. You got to find an identity. You got to stop turning the ball over. They were number one eleven in turnover margin. Their offensive PPA per drive last year was number one twenty one. Now on defense, DJ Elliott uh, is the new defensive coordinator, and he was last seen as the defensive coordinator at Kansas under Les Miles. Now. The defensive cupboard isn't empty there. I mean, there's there's potential at every position, even if it's not experienced. Like, the secondary was decent enough last year, number 72 in passing success rate. Um, but, man, they were number 109 in rushing success rate allowed, and that just ain't going to work in this conference. Uh, man, when I look at, like, after, after Rule left, this was viewed as, like, a really good G5 job. Collins did good things. Then they missed on Manny. And then Rod Carey, like, really hurt the process. Uh, they just, they whiffed on that one. Uh, the roster is still depleted. Even if there's, like, stud players here and there, it's still going to take a big rebuilding job to fix this. And anything that they do this year, I think is going to be better than number 126 in net points per drive. Like, I, they're going to need a lot of upsets this year. I don't see it. Uh, I think they're going to take most of this year to focus on recruiting. And and then we'll see from there. I've got them beating UMass. I got them beating Lafayette, and that's it. I got two and ten. Two and ten. That's what I got too. Um, I don't. I don't know how good they're going to be in the future either. So I, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see. We'll see what this coaching staff does. But they just don't have a lot of talent. They're not very good. Now you you were not wrong there. Um, it's just rough to look at. Like, Temple used to be so good. South Florida used to be so yep. good. And, yep. and man, they are in a world of hurt right now. Just a world right. of hurt. Oh, just frustrating. I don't know what happened. So. Ah, it is what it is. Uh, you, you get the wrong coach. Like, it, we've seen it in the SEC. Like, Tennessee went through years of bad coaching hires. Like, in the G5. It's, it's, yeah. You, what, what kills you is, you're right. But it's, it's not just a bad coaching hire. It's when you compound bad coach after bad coach after bad coach, and now you're just a program that nobody respects. 
nobody wants to go. Like it, the glory days are so far removed from kids that are today. You're trying to recruit to come play football there. Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy how quickly the cycle runs because, I mean it was just 2018 that they were playing for, uh, you know, a conference title I believe in in Temple. So I. Well, and, here, and here's but 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 think about it now. This year's recruiting class, this year's group of 2023 seniors coming in. Okay, in 2018 they were barely in middle school. Yeah, that's what's crazy. That's <laughs> it moves so fast. Move so fast, you make one wrong hire, and it can set you back a long time. Uh, and if you make if you make two, it, oh. I think you can come back from one. You make two, man. You if you don't hit gold on the third one, and that third one could be a good coach, but he's just shoveling himself out of such a big hole that it you know you might not get the results you want. But. Oh, but we're we're seeing that at Florida State right now, right? Uh, yep, that was at the just about end, to say, like, Jimbo was not a good coach his last couple of years in Tallahassee. Like, it, uh, we we've got we've got different opinions on that. Oh, I I, I know. Like, I do agree with you on the way that things went uh, as far as that boosters is, and whatnot. Is, that is a that is a burning down the bridge before I run off the bridge. But at the same time, it did hurt the program, right? And then you brought in another coach well, yeah. that didn't know how to pull it out. And that's right. And once you did that, now Mike Norvell who I think we agree is a pretty good coach, uh, he's having a difficult time pulling them back out of that. So, and Temple can end up with the same thing if they don't hit it with, with Stan Drayton. So we'll we'll see. We'll see what happens, but I don't I don't see it happening this year. So you got 2-10 and ten as well, right? I got 2-10 and ten as well. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.